This is your host Danny and this is Do You Know from English Plus podcast. What do you know about horses? We might all love horses, love the way they walk or trot or gallop, but how much do you know about horses? If you don't know much, this is your lucky day because today's Do You Know episode is about horses. Before we start, let me remind you that you can find more on our website. You can find the link in the description. It will take you to the custom post we created for this episode. And the post is about horses, of course. But also, you will find other posts on our website that are related to other topics that we cover in English Plus Podcast. Some of them have interactive activities. Some of them have PDF downloadable worksheets. So there is a lot for you to find on our website, EnglishPlusPodcast.com. Take the link, go there, take your English and knowledge with it to the next level. And we're also adding premium episodes every day. So if you would like to have access to these premium episodes, there are two ways. You can subscribe on Apple Podcasts or you can become a patron of our show on Patreon. The links are in the description of the episode. So go there, subscribe, get everything English Plus Podcast has to offer. And by doing that, you will be supporting us and helping us continue creating both free and premium episodes. Now, without further ado, let's talk about these magnificent animals. Let's talk about horses. Horses are speedy and graceful animals. You'll know this if you've ever watched a horse race. When a horse runs, it can have all four of its feet in the air at the same time. A photographer demonstrated this surprising fact with photographs in 1887. In the past, people rode horses when they wanted to get somewhere fast. Horses also helped people by pulling plows, loaded wagons, and other heavy farm equipment. So what are horses like? Horses have long necks, hairy coats, and long tails and manes. A mane is hair that grows on an animal's neck. Horses come in many colors, including black, brown, tan, and white. Horses have strong legs and bodies, and they can travel long distances. When they're on the move, they graze on grasses. Horses also eat oats and other grains. Horses range greatly in size. The smallest horse ever measured was a miniature pony. It stood only 19 inches or 48 centimeters high. The largest horse stood 6 feet or 1.8 meters tall. A horse's height is measured to the top of its shoulders. Horses are very social animals. They live in herds with other horses. They are very sensitive to signals so they can learn to like and obey a human trainer. So, the next question, where did horses come from? Horses are all members of a family of animals called equids. Equids also include zebras and donkeys. The first member of the equid family was the dawn horse, or Eohippus. Eohippus was the ancestor of all modern horses, zebras, and donkeys. Eohippus roamed North American forests about 55 million years ago. Eohippus was a lot smaller than a modern horse and had four toes on its front foot and three toes on its rear feet, and had four toes on its front feet and three toes on its rear feet. Modern horses have only one toe on each foot. About 20 million years ago, there were many kinds of equids in North America. These wild equids spread to other parts of the world. They crossed land bridges that connected North America to Europe and Asia during ice ages. So, how did people tame horses? About 7,000 years ago, people living in the grasslands of Asia learned to tame the wild horses that lived there. Herds of tamed horses grew, they were sold to people all over Europe. Today, there are about 60 million tamed horses living throughout the world. There are only a few wild horses left. These horses are descended from tamed horses that escaped or were turned loose. So, how do people use horses? People in some countries still use horses to do work. However, most horses in the United States and Canada are used for racing, games, and pleasure riding. Horses were one of the most important domestic animals in history. People rode horses for transportation. 
Soldiers rode horses into battle. People raced horses for sport. Horses pulled the first trains and fire engines. Horses pulled plows over farm fields. Horses pulled wagons and buggies. City streets were once filled with horses. And finally, let's talk about the three main types of horses. Light horses, heavy horses, and ponies. Today, the three main types of horses are light horses, heavy horses, and ponies. People have created the different types of horses that exist today by careful breeding. They have bred horses with specific qualities that they seek, such as speed and size. Two fast, lightweight horses, for example, have a good chance of producing rapid and light children. People put saddles on light horses and ride them. Light horses also make good race horses. Thoroughbreds, quarter horses, Arabians, Morgans, and standard breds are all varieties of light horses. So what about heavy horses? Heavy horses were created by breeding the biggest, strongest horses. They include draft horses and coach horses. Hundreds of years ago, during the Middle Ages, draft horses were war horses. They were bred big and strong to carry knights in heavy metal suits of armor into battle. Farmers later used draft horses to pull plows and heavy wagons. Now farmers use tractors instead of draft horses. Coach horses were bred for pulling large carriages and for doing light farm work. Carriages are vehicles that people rode in before cars. And finally, we have the ponies. Ponies are small horses. People bred the smallest horses to get ponies. Ponies are usually less than 50 inches or 127 centimeters tall. The most familiar pony breeds are the Welsh Mountain Pony and the Shetland Pony. So that being said, that's everything I wanted to share with you about horses. I hope you like what I shared with you about horses or, and learned something new, of course. Let me remind you one more time that you can find links in the description of the episode, one that will take you to our website, English Plus Podcast, and two other links that will give you a chance to subscribe to our premium content on Apple Podcasts or become a patron of our show on Patreon. And a special note for those of you who are considering becoming a patron of English Plus Podcast, there is something else that is coming your way very soon, and that is English Plus Magazine. I'm not going to talk more about that. I'm going to leave that as a surprise for you. But very soon you will start receiving English Plus Magazine. All the issues will be available to our patrons on Patreon. With that being said, I would like to thank you very much for listening to another episode from English Plus Podcast. This is your host, Danny. I will see you next time.